Hey guys, Billy Davidson here with Davidson Pressure Washing and Painting. In this video, we're gonna be reviewing this soft wash skid. So guys, I also wanna to mention to you, if you're looking for our resource page, please check out the link in the description. We have some all new training videos in there ready for you right now. Also check out the link in the description for southeastsoftwash.com website and their phone number. So here we are looking at this mini skid from Southeast Soft Wash. We're gonna talk about a few things about having this skid for the past few months and doing dozens and dozens of jobs. Also, we're gonna go over a couple critiques I might have, so wait to the end for that. Also, I wanna mention that this blue paint in the back of the truck is not from the skid. <laughs> I know we'll probably get some questions about that. That was Apex spilling some blue paint from our parking lot striping jobs. And you know how that is. Once it's spilled, there's nothing you can do about it. So anyway, let's get on and talk about this skid. Right here, you seeing the skid sitting in the back of a Toyota Tundra. Now this is the long bed of a Tundra. I think this is about a six and a half foot bed here. So we do have plenty of room to spare. Matter of fact, we wanted this type of skid so we would have some extra room in the back of this Tundra to put our parking lot striping machine and it actually worked out great. All right, guys, right here, we're looking at the soft wash skid here from Southeast Soft Wash. So we're going to go over a couple components about this soft wash skid. Like I said, we've had this since August 2020, so it's going on several months. Now, this thing's traveled across the United States and back. We've visited up to five states now, I believe, doing soft washing and some commercial power washing. This thing came along with us. Um, first, we're going to start out by talking about the different components that you're looking at right here. So we have two 50-gallon tanks. Those are the two square tanks up close to the cab of the truck. Our um, setup right here, we used our uh, H2O tank, our water tank on the driver's side, and our uh, sodium hypochlorite tank on the other side. Now, in the middle, you'll see a surfactant tank, and we'll take a look at it here shortly from the other side. Let's talk about these two square 50 gallon tanks because I get a lot of questions about that. Um, first of all, one tank is filled with water and the other tank is with sodium hypochlorite. Can you use those on different sides? And I'm assuming you can. We just use our sodium hypochlorite tank on the passenger side because that's easy access to us to refill at the refilling station. So that's important to us, the way we can drive in and exit that refilling station with a trailer. Now, uh, like I said, can you put the bleach on the other side and the water on the side? I think you can. Just don't uh, get your mixing valves mixed up like I did. Um, so that's what those two tanks so far. Now, you would not be able to power this off of a water hose and do away with your H2O tank just for the simple fact that water hose is going to have positive pressure and that is definitely going to uh, recalibrate your mix ratio on your mixing valve so i wouldn't recommend doing that use this soft wash skid as designed for best results now in addition to those two 50 gallon tanks sitting up there near the cab it's also sitting on an aluminum pallet that pallet is what we would call the skid now you can take in it and out of the truck with a fart lift or a couple guys can handle it if the tanks are empty so another thing you see in the camera view here is our surfactant tank which is in the middle that's a much smaller tank i want to say that's about a 15 gallon tank we're going to go around the other side and talk about that also you see the pump mounted to the side of the skid right there that is for easy access that is a 12 volt 5.5 gallon per minute pump and i get a lot of questions about these pumps and we're going to address that here shortly um, also, you see the hose reel, and then uh, that is what it is. It holds the ag hose, about 200 feet of ag hose. Now, all this did come with the skid. Um, it did come with a soft wash wand. And also, now this hose reel is sitting on a diamond plated square box. Inside that box is your battery and battery charger. I will show you that from another angle, too, as well in a minute. That battery and battery charger it's an automobile size battery so it'll run this skid for about two days without recharging it also the battery charger is plug in and forget once you plug it into an extension cord. so let's get back to the pump that you see here mounted to the side this pump is mounted in a way that you can change it out because you will have to change it out and it is a expendable product that uh, you're just going to have to deal with um now we had did another review on these 5.5 gallon pumps 
and we have to change ours out about every three months so this is the second one on this skid the first one we uh we did a little test on it we brought in about twenty eight thousand dollars worth of revenue with that pump before it died and the pump was less than 130 dollars to uh replace it so it's definitely um very minor cost for keeping your skid up and running it's something you're going to just have to expect you have to replace these pumps now to get a little bit longer life out of the pump you want to rinse it out with plain water uh, for several minutes afterwards to get all of that sodium hypochlorite out of it and that will let the pump last a bit longer and that is important also i will say this too as well um, when we went through our first pump with this skid we used it extensively it was some long duration use on that uh 5.5 everflow pump we actually were pre-treating about 300,000 square feet of concrete so you know the pump ran for long periods of time and we knew it at the time that we was probably overusing the pump but at the time we needed to lay down our pre-treat and the minor cost of replacing the pump was not of any significance to us also i want to mention that that hose reel comes with a lock and that keeps the hose reel from unraveling while you're traveling so right here what you're looking at is the box that contains the battery and the battery charger it uh, has the ability to lock and also it has enough room in there to store some other things in there if you want to store a bag uh, extra change of clothes gloves some extra little parts or whatever you want to uh, store in there so right here we are looking at the passenger side of the skid unit you're seeing our mixer valves uh, Apex has actually told me several times he's going to color code my mixer valves because I'm a bit uh, colorblind so maybe that would help me out because of some retina detachments I had in the past but he's got to get to that uh, keep him so busy he's probably sleeping right now but either way um, you can do that but that is the mixer valves you have one H2O mixer valve you have one surfactant mixer valve and also you have a sodium hypochlorite mixer valve these mixer valves are very important now I used a batch mix and it sucked. I batch mix for way too long. I put off way too long on buying a skid. I should have bought this thing years earlier. I was batch mixing, getting that sodium hypochlorite on my hands, eating my hands up. It was terrible. But now that we have this mixer valve and a softball skid, that bleach never touches me. And that is important to me. And that right there is worth its price of admission, I promise you. Also, these mixer valves definitely speed up the roof cleaning process it's street by extreme amounts if you batch mixing that takes time to batch mix even if you're doing it at home before you get to the job i know some guys say well i batch mix before i get the job well you still spending time at home batch mixing and then riding around with all this stuff slopping around and sloshing around and it did us that before too i mean it rotted out a bed of a truck before so guys just go ahead as soon as you can get a unit with mixer valves and thank me later and you will because this is so much easier we can we can spray a roof we can uh get on a roof and spray a shingle roof and immediately come down here turn our knobs to a lesser value and go straight into pre-treating concrete do the house and a lot of times we in and out of there before we know it you know grab the check and move on to the next job and that's what's important not only these mixer valves make things easier but it makes the production rate go much higher we can get in a, an entire another roof cleaning concrete and a house wash by not having a batch mix so guys here is our surfactant tank and also um i'm going to tell you some pros and cons about this skid unit so please stay to the end all right guys here again is the surfactant tank this is something that you want to uh, always keep full of water if this thing runs dry and you got your surfactant mixing valve open your machine it's not going to work properly so always make sure you got surfactant or either liquid in this tank. Again, if this tank runs dry, your machine is not going to work properly and you're going to be down. And this is something that a lot of guys do overlook. So guys, what I normally do, I take one gallon of the surfactant that Southeast Softwash sells because I feel that it was definitely formulated for soft washing and formulated for his equipment. So uh, we started getting that from him and we're very pleased with it. So this one gallon of surfactant with um, 14 gallons of water in this surfactant tank, 
definitely does it really good now I, I tend to mix mine a little bit thicker the way i usually mix it i mix one gallon with 10 gallons of water that is uh that's about where you see it's at and, and usually that makes it really nice and thick i like myself a little bit thicker it's a couple reasons it cuts down on overspray when i'm doing a roof especially if it's windy and also i seems that i'm using less sodium hypochlorite so that being said, the less sodium hypochlorite I'm spraying, the better off I am, the less mitigation I got to do for plant property protection. Again, guys, it calls for about 1 to 15, 1 to 14 ratio with a gallon of surfactant and then fill the rest with water. Uh, I tend to fill my tank with water and then I put the surfactant in it because this stuff is very sudsy. If you do it the other way, you can ax apex. It will foam up on you. I think he accidentally put the gallon in there first and then he was filling up with water and we just had a, like a little volcano coming out. It was kind of funny. But yeah, put your water in first, then your gallon surfactant. Uh, 1 to 10 ratio is where we run it, but I think you can run it up to about a 1 to 14 ratio. So another thing I want to say in this video, I'm not saying to do this or not to do it. Just leave this up to your own discretion. If you change Cody's design, then you're responsible for it. But I took it up on myself to add this extra little valve in. This is for us transferring. We're very familiar with this unit. We're very familiar with soft wash pumps and stuff. So this wasn't an issue for us, but that is a transfer valve that you probably won't see on some of his other units. Well guys, here is a soft wash wand supplied by Southeast Soft Wash. Now we do have a J-Rod on us, um, but you can use any tip of your choice. I, I particularly like the J-Rod because I can interchange those rather quickly. And this thing will actually squirt bleach up at least 25 feet from ground level. From our experience, like I said, we're getting about 25 feet from ground level. If it's really windy or something, you probably need a step ladder to get those extra couple feet uh, to reach something. But other than that, this is, saves us so much time not having to get on ladders as much as we used to. So right here on the side of the pump, you'll see a switch. That is the on and off valve for the soft wash system. And basically, once it's in the on position, which it is now, you just take this ball valve and you open it and you'll hear the pump come on. And then when you close the ball valve, the pump reaches its optimum pressure and cuts off and it's designed to do that. Guys, here I'm going to talk about the three critiques I have with the soft wash system. Okay, guys, overall, I've had three complaints about the soft wash system. They're not major, um, but, you know, this may be something that you can do at your house in your spare time to fix this problem really easier. Now, earlier, as I said, I'm a bit colorblind um, just because of retina detachment. So I'm having Apex color code my valves over here because there was a couple times I turned the wrong valve, being tired, working too hard. That may not happen to everybody, but for me, I would like my valves color coded. I'm going to do blue for water, obviously. Uh, keep one for red for the SH, and then I'm gonna maybe do another one yellow or something for the soap. Um, I've talked to a couple other guys. They didn't have any trouble, but I just think that would be a little nice little add-on. Um, so Apex is supposed to color code them for me, but he's been a bit missing in action because I'm working them too hard, he said. But uh, also, you can put some color-coded tie straps on it. That would definitely take care of the issue. The second critique I have about this soft wash skid Still not a major critique given the overall tens of thousands of dollars we've earned with this thing. This 50-gallon uh, tank has no gallon markings on it. Now, what we have done when we go to the refilling station, if we have some in there and there's no markings on a tank, and then we, like, for example, if we have 13 gallons on board, or we don't know, sometimes it might be 11 or it might be 15. We just have no idea because there's no markings on it. Um, and then the refilling station wants to know how much the charge is for. So sometimes they get a little weird about that. But needless to say, that's really easy enough to do. Just measure the height of the tank. Apex has already done his unit. Measure the height of the tank and quarter it down by fours and uh, put some stickers on it or whatever you want to do. It just, uh, you know, divide it up into fours and that'll give you 12.5 gallons per marking you could do that or you can do it by five however you want to do it that's the only thing i wish it did have some gallon markings on it now the third main critique i have of the software skid is a very serious critique and i hope you stay tuned for that my third main problem with having the software skid and y'all can leave a comment in below to let me know what you think about this critique 
a lot of people on our job sites ask me what this is. Okay, so they don't know what it is. It looks like some type of odd contraption or whatever. I agree. It doesn't look like something that you normally see in everyday uh, life. So they want to know, what does it do? Where did I get it from? How much did it cost? So once I start explaining to them what it does, how much it costs, what its capabilities are, and what it's designed to do, how it can bring a shingle roof that looks old and nasty, brand new, almost like the day that it was installed, then all of a sudden they want a price on a roof, and then they having us do the roof, and then I never get a break and I need a vacation. So that's my main critique about it. It draws a lot of attention. But seriously, guys, it does draw a lot of attention from homeowners. It does look professional. You're not out there mixing stuff in buckets, spilling it all over the grass. They asking questions. You can tell them what the system's capable of doing and win more jobs than you would otherwise. True fact. So think about that, guys. Just having great equipment looks good. And also, if you wanted to, you can put your logos on the side of this tank very easy. It wouldn't be that big, but it would definitely be something else that you could logo up. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed the review for the soft wash kit from Southeast Soft Wash. Please check out the links in the description. I highly recommend this unit. Also, check out the link in the description for our resource page if you're looking for new ways to market your pressure washing business. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Guys, I'm Billy Davidson here with Davidson Pressure Washing Painting.